Okay, here we are again. It's been a week, Peter. How does a week go by so quickly? You know, we have so much stuff. We might have to do these twice a week. <laughs> no, especially today. My list, we're, we're going to show you, did I say six or seven fabric lines? I think you said six, but it could be seven now because they just rolled one out. I know. Okay, so yeah, fabric's coming in. Um, yowza. Yowza. It's exciting. It's fun. So we're going to start with the um, made with love project that we're working on first september we did a series in the summer and you guys had so much fun doing it we're continuing it we found this lovely pattern from the moda company called a patchwork pouch i made one just you know because we are so good here peter now he found the pattern credit to peter peter found the pattern and has that been linked on our website uh, it should be, yes. Cool. I'll have to make sure with Sandy, but it should be out there. So find it on our website find like our you website. did the other ones. Yep. On the website, you can call Orders Department, 317-776-4227. Um, They'll snail mail you one at no charge. You can get one by email. We can attach it as a PDF, and you can get it that way. Um, you can walk in the store and say, I would like to have the free pattern, please, and they will give you the free pattern. Um, so this is really fun. Fun, 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 fun. And... I, I made this one as a sample, and I don't remember whether I showed it to him or not. I mean, did I just, I think I did. I can't, I don't remember. I don't know, but you walked up to the register and saw it was, he <laughs> was telling us. I walked up to the register when I was shopping the other day, and <laughs> we have two registers in the store, and one's on one side and one <laughs> is at a 90 degree angle to the other. Yeah. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw this bag, and I was like, what is that? That is so cool. <laughs> and as I walk over there, then I see the pattern, and I'm like, oh, oh man, man, I already got that pattern. That's the one we're doing. <laughs> That's okay. One time, this is a funny story too. One time, Lenine was reading the local newspaper. Lenine owns our store. She was reading the local local newspaper about an activity that was going on that was being sponsored. That was a sewing event, and all this fun stuff was going to happen. And she was she she read all the way through the article and got about halfway through and said to her husband, "This looks like a really fun thing. I wonder who's doing it." It was our store. <laughs> we were putting it on. And she didn't know. It was so cute. She laughed about it. We laughed. We all laughed about it that she didn't even know we were doing it. So, you know, we're like that around here. We we don't always know exactly what's going on everywhere, but we catch on eventually. We got good hearts. Um, anyway, so that we're making this pouch uh, made with love by Moda. And I'm gonna, I told you last week, you need to think about fabric. Think about your fabric. Well, then I made this thing. And then today, I just have to show you. Just wanna show you. This is like Mary Poppins. Did you ever watch the Mary Poppins? Is it Mary Poppins that opens her bag and pulls everything out? Uh, yeah, she has that duffel bag, doesn't yeah, she? And she? Carpet pulls, bag. It's carpet a carpet bag. bag. Yeah, and she starts pulling stuff out and she pulls out like, I don't know, tons of stuff. It was obviously an optical illusion, but it's a good one. As a little kid, I was like, wow, I want one of those bags. This is sort of like that. And I was so, just talking about how I need to watch that this uh, weekend. Yeah. Because I was singing that song. And we have a, a coworker here. And if you have a coworker, you can change the lyrics. Yes. How do you solve a problem like. And that then you person. just yeah, and you just put their name in it if they're annoying you that day, and you just walk yeah. around singing it, and, and they have no clue what you're talking about. And we were talking about how if you heard us talk back here, you might think we don't like each other, but we really do. We love to pick on each other. We just we're merciless. You gotta have thick skin to work in the back room here because we're we're always teasing each and other. And thick skulls. And thick skulls because one never knows. Okay, so this is the Made with Love patchwork pouch, and I want to show you all the things I was able to put in here. So these are my um, if you don't know what these are, these are fabulous. These are um, U pins. Now, you know, I'm going to show them all these things, and now you have to link every single thing in the video. So, good idea to put these in here. These are great for doing, um, getting your quarter inch seams to match perfectly. I love this. This is like my favoritest. Where's the one that was? We had the one together? that's sewn together. I know. Where's it at? Here it is. So, if I'm sewing two seams together and I want them to match perfectly, I can put this U pin right there and it holds on either side of the seam and it's going to hold that in place. So this these are these are my dream. These changed my life. I mean literally they did really change my world. I love these pins. Um, and they you come You talked me into buying them and I've been using them ever since. When it I will, have to sew a piece that seamed to yes. a piece that seamed. Yeah, it is. It just Unbelievable. Unbelievable the difference it makes. It really, really does. So these that's what these are. These are U-pins. So I have my little box of those in this bag. I have the eensy weensy teensy scissors. 
Your favorite sharp scissors. My favorite, that are super sharp. We did a video a couple days ago and it was like, holy moly, these little beasts are sharp now. I bought mine yesterday did and you? I worked on my cross stitch and so, I, and they fit in my um, vintage uh, class, class wallet. There you go. And they hardly take up any space. They're perfect, they're perfect. Perfect little scissors. Love them. Okay, and then because we are always in stitches, we have this really cool, I want you to see this. This is a little tool set. And you know, for your sewing machines, sometimes you can't get the eensy teensiest little and your sergers. Isn't this a handy little thing? You know, we might could give one of these away. That might be kind of fun. Anyway, so that fits in there. I, I have found this to be very useful on more than one occasion. So there's that. I have my Viani stylus, which we love. The Viani stylus with the wood iron on the end. It probably doesn't show up against that wood. Here, we'll paint this underneath it so you can see it. There you go. Buy any stylus with the wood in. And you see everything in here I have marked, always in Stitches Studio. We, we've had to put sewing tools in our studio, and I will remind you that if you're going to a retreat, be sure you put your name on stuff, because, man, there's nothing worse than sitting at a table with 14 people and everybody's confused whose thing is what. I've got my Quilter Select rotary cutter in there. This is my favorite rotary cutter in the whole wide, wide world. I love how it functions, how it works. It's It's got a quick release that I can open it up and I can open it deep or I can open it just the regular amount. It's left or right. I don't have to change the blade to make it left or right. It goes both ways. Um, and it's easy to take the blade out to change it. I'm just, this is like the best. It's weighted, so in my hand it feels really good. This is a good grody cut. Look how much stuff I'm getting out of this bag. I have a seam ripper, a real seam ripper. <laughs> <laughs> I've been showing that you guys. It only took like a month. I know, to get a decent seam ripper in here. This is a great seam ripper because when you rip the seam, which I'll, I'll, I'll rip this out just so you see how perfect this works. So I pull here. Rip it. Start rip the, it. if the case it is. And then I put it. the ball, this is something you have to teach people, which cracks me up, down. Rip it. And just push. Rip it. Push, push, push. I'm trying to do this so you can see through the camera instead of me just doing it like I normally would. I normally just take a hold of it. But you just push that down like that, right in that seam. Boop. What do you do with Pull all the apart. whiskers? And the whiskers then, this end, look, it goes, look at that. It picks them up. And then I can put that in my trash, my trashola. And your ort bin. My ort bin, that's right. There you go. And then this side too, because those have all the little pieces. It pulls them all off, see? So it's like a little eraser. Love this, this is one of my favoriteest seam rippers. And a friction pen, friction, fraught friction, friction, I don't know how you say it. These are great, uh, I would be cautioning you using them on solid fabric, sometimes they will take color out. But these are nice for marking seams, so if I needed to mark a line, this has to have some weight under it. If I have to mark a line on something, I can put whatever lines. I put a little smiley face. This is fun with the kids. Write them a message and then iron it and it disappears. So see, I, I'll put this, I'll just make a little flower. Whoop. And now I take it to the iron. I'm gonna take the iron. Here we go, off camera. Iron, same piece of fabric and it's gone. So that's kind of fun. So if you have two colors of those pens, what would it be called? Would it be called frickin' frack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're sharp today, man. You're on top of the game. I'm hydrated. You I are had, hydrated. I had two glasses of water. Oh, this morning. Okay, that's why you're so pippy. Got it. All right, so I, this is still all coming out of this bag. And then I also have, this is another fun thing, an always in stitches thing. This is a Creative Grids ruler. It's two and a half by six and a half inches long. Great, handy little size. Oh my goodness, if you don't have one this size, you know, again, this is something we could give away. Mm. Mm. Like mm. one person could get this and one person could get that. How mm. special would that be? I would be thrilled to get these items. So all those things, okay, yeah, it's empty. All those things fit in this bag. And if you look and at all these we things. We didn't have it filled up all the way. We didn't, there was more room. But if you look at, these are the basic things. I could really take these to any sewing retreat and I would have 
pretty much what I need to start sewing. I mean, I've got a seam wrapper. I've got, this works as a stylus. It also works as a little presser because it's got the, the wooden presser on the end. I've got my needles. I've got a small pair of scissors. I could have put another bigger pair of scissors in there too. Yeah, you could have, My rotary sure. cutter. I've got a, a measure. I've got a mark. Boom, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So this is a perfect little pouch as if I didn't have to sell you on it already. Um, I'm, it's just the right size. So let's talk about the instructions a little bit. Um, in the instructions, it tells you to select uh, rectangles, and basically what they're doing is taking a charm pack and cutting it in half to make a two and a half by five inch uh, square. That's fine. That's what I did for this one, and I did it exactly as the instructions said. But here's the other part that dawned on me. I could use a layer cake. A layer cake is 10 inches square, right? And I have to have a piece, oh, 10 and a half. Hmm. Is that going to mess me up? It's 10 inches, but you know what? I could do 10 inches. It's not going to make any difference. A layer cake is 10, 10 inches by 10 inches, and I'm supposed to have 9 and a half by 10 and a half, but I could still just cut a half an inch off of this and still come out fine and be 9 and a half by 10 inches, and it would be fine. It would work because this is not an exact pattern. It's just thrown together but use this for the outside and this for the inside or something like that. And I wouldn't have to sew all these little pieces together if I didn't want to. Um, I have here some fusible fleece. It's fusible on one side. So this is just a 10 inch square to use for that. And I can iron that onto my piece like this. Now it doesn't quite go out to the edges because I haven't cut off my half inch. But iron that on. And then the directions have you put this on a zipper. Um, and it's super, super, super simple. And I forgot to get a zipper, so oh, I have to go get a zipper. Let's get a zipper. I'll get a zipper. I'll be right back. So we got our zipper. We can get going on our zipper. I'm going to start selecting my charm squares. Now, I talked about the fact that I could use a 10-inch layer cake for that, which it absolutely could. But since the pattern calls for using these charm squares, I wanted to kind of go through that process with you. And then you can improvise next time and use a layer cake if you'd like. So in a charm pack, you usually have duplicate pieces. So, so rather than repeat something on the sides of my bag, I'm going to make sure when I pick my charms, I don't pick something that I already have. So, I, okay, this one's one of our favorites. <laughs> we both went, love, oh, that. I love that. I love it. So I'm going to get that one. I like the pink. There's two blues. I'm not going to get both blues. I think I need basically five because I'm going to cut them in half. And I like that one. Well, this is just fun, just picking what I want. Okay, so, and I can stack these to cut them. And matter of fact, if you don't, if you want to just be really random about it, you could just absolutely just cut a charm pack in half. So if I have five inch squares and I cut them in half, then that gives me two and a half by five inch squares. Now, I won't cut much more than four layers at a time. Three, four, yeah. So there's four layers, and those are squared back up, and I'm going to cut them in half. So when I cut two and a half inches, then I have uh, two and a half on both sides. So there's my squares. Same thing here. Two and a half inches. Okay. And then what it tells you to do is to sew these to each other so that you do two columns of five squares each. So these, there's one, two, three, four, and I want to mix them up a little bit, or you can be as random as you want. There's five, and then again, one, two, Three, mix them up, mix them up, four, five, there we go. So I'm going to sew all these together. Um, I'm actually going to do that one for the bag and one for the lining. So the lining is also pieced in the same manner as the outside is. See that's exactly the same which is great. We can do that. So I'm going to have to do this twice. So I'm going to do that at the sewing machine um, and have that ready and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to put in the zipper, I think.
We'll do the zipper this week. I don't want to drag this out too long. We're getting towards the end of September already, believe it or not. So I'm going to be at the sewing machine sewing these, and we'll be right back, and I'll show you the next step. Chain piecing. <laughs> Okay, so I have sewn my two and a half inch by five inch squares together. There's five, one, two, three, four, five on this side, five on this side. And I pressed the seams going this way on one sheet and pressed them going the other way on the other sheet. So the, what happens is they nest into each other. So you can see one goes this way. There it is, hanging out. This one goes the other way. So when I put those two together, they just nest into each other. And then these U-pins that I was talking about, this is where this application comes in. Then you take that U-pin and you lay it down on either side of that seam and push that down in there. And that holds my seam perfectly matched so that I get the points like this. See how that's just right on the money right on the money right on the money okay so when i sew that through my sewing machine now i have these pins now these pins have a little up to them are these the ones that are thin enough that you can sew over well technically you could but don't say that very loud if jeff's in the room we get in trouble our technician gets really annoyed when people sew over pins because oh, it throws your timing off. And when I go be... when I go into a quilt store, my favorite thing to do is ask for pins that are thin enough to sew that you can <laughs> sew over, just to see what the staff says. Just to watch us go. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Just to see them cringe. It, it just makes it makes <laughs> us cringe. Yeah. You really shouldn't sew over pins. We used to. We used to do it all the time, but but anymore they don't recommend it. So anyway, I'm going to start sewing, and um, I'm not locking these stitches because I'm going to sew back over them. But what happens when I get to that is as I get closer, I'm, I get a couple stitches like almost to the pin. I'm not sewing over it yet. But see, here's my stylus. Because these lift, what? I just do that. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. And I've gotten to where I can almost just do this without even Well, that pausing. stitch right there is worth the price of admission, Cappy. There you go. See there? I love it. Isn't that fun? And That's they just fun. fly across the room. Now, I have to be careful because my cats are like, oh, there they go. And they'll try and grab them. I didn't put one down here at the bottom, but that's okay. I'm going to get there. There you go. Done. Done. So that's that's both sides. They're going to look like this. Okay, so I have two pieces. And when you sew those together now, that makes that 9.5 by 10.5 is what this ends up being. Um, so I have those two squares. And all the little points match, lo and behold. I'm telling you, that's the best trick. Um, I did press the center seam open on this. Uh, it doesn't, I don't know that it even tells you, but I just pressed it open because I thought that was the best deal. But you can see these are going that way, these are going this way, and that's what gave me those nice little nesting points that are dead on perfect, which make us very happy. Not that anybody's going to judge this little pack, but if they would. Now, well, you'd be surprised. I just was while well, you were sewing blocks i took a peek to the moto blockhead group mm. and i was looking at a block and i was like man that color combination is money and then i was like reading the comments and they're like you should check your thread tension oh and oh they're like don't be quilt shaman <laughs> and they were like all over and then oh. in the description she says now i'm just a beginner so be easy on me well be nice and i mean they were just be nice tearing it apart yeah if you can't say something nice don't say nothing at all i was like whoa calm down everybody <laughs> calm down it's probably your first calm block down. everybody yeah. just calm down and now she'll never stitch again because she feels judged and condemned okay so i'm pressing that open and then what they tell you to do is um interface the lining well these two pieces i just got to pick which one's the outside which one's the inside i could have done again i could have cut ten and a half by nine inch squares and just made that um, one piece. Well, it's like little Willy to. Wonka candy bars. It is. It's kind of fun. And it used up a charm pack, which, you know, I'm always trying to figure out what to do with charm packs. I know. I got so many that I yeah. have just lying around. I don't know what to do with. And I was I was just random. However they landed was how they landed. I mean, I got 
three gingham prints here together, that might flip somebody out. I don't care. I, I, I think the randomness of it's what makes it interesting. So. Well, at the end of the day, the one the will day? be on one side and one will be on the other. That's so right. Matter. You ain't going to notice anyway. Okay. So what we have to do now, according to the pattern, is put our interfacing in. And like I said, I have a fusible, fusible, fleece-ish kind of interfacing. You could put something. This is kind of not real firm. If I wanted to put foam interfacing in it, I could. If I wanted to use, you know, a decor bond, there's all kinds of choices. It's just going to make it heavier. You just got to remember that it's going to make it heavier. Um, now this piece is just a little bit bigger or a little bit, my, my lining piece is a little bit bigger, but I'm really okay with that because this was a scrap. Yeah, the seams anyway. They're in the seams anyway. They're going to be in the gussets. Yeah. Meh, who cares? Won't even know. You won't even know. So this piece is just a scooch smaller, but it's not like a. Ridiculous. So what'd you do? Where's the glue? The glue is facing the back, wrong side of the fabric. I hope it is, or I'm, <laughs> or I'm adhering this to the. To the thing. Oh God, that would have been funny on camera. Done it, done it, done it, done it. Um, Whoa, it's no fun. I haven't used the fusible fleece yet. Oh, I love the fusible fleece. It's one of my faves. Because she's done. She's stuck. Now, I could go back, and it might be kind of fun if you really wanted to. Oh, stitch in the ditch. That would be do fun. Decorative, Decorative stitch, like that kitty cat stitch. Yeah, yeah, we could do all kinds of fun stuff. But this is on my lining, okay? Lining oh, gets diffusible. Oh, don't get fancy then. So I wouldn't necessarily do it on the lining, but I could certainly do it on this piece if I wanted, which is going to be my exterior. Lining gets the fusible. Lining gets the fusible. I would have messed that up. I would really would have. Okay. Yeah. Because Use it's, the interface into the wrong side of the lining. It's in step one. Yeah, I would so. have. I would have by default automatically stuck it in the on wrong the spot. Yep. There you go. That's why we have a pattern. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I waited for the video and then there made this. Okay, I have a 14 inch zipper here. This is kind of a standard, easy to buy zipper. It's longer than what I need. That's perfect. I'd rather have one longer than not long enough. And here's what you do. And the picture. Is your friend? I like this thing. Looks like I've. What run do you it do to it? I know. It's, been everywhere. it's all wrinkled. Oh well. It's like it's like the cat's got it's, your homework. It did. The cat got my homework. So this is my nine and a half side, and this is my ten inch side. And the picture shows the nine and a half inch side going this way, and the ten inch and a half side going this way. So this is the lining. This is the right side of the lining. Right side of the lining. See that? And then the zipper is right side up and it's laying right here on that lining. Okay? Now this is bigger. Actually, I'm going to just let that hang out on either side. It makes it easier to sew if you do it that way. Um, so yeah, it does. It really does. It, <laughs> you, 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 by the time I cut that much off of the zipper, I might be able to use that in another project, but I would rather have the convenience of not having to mess with it and just have this to sew with. It's just easier all the way. So, I think lay the zipper on the right side of the line. Okay, we're going to do this in one shot. I'm going to lay that there. Then I'm going to take the bag front, right sides together, on the zipper and the lining. So I'm making a sandwich. This is going inside. Got it? Get it? Got it good? And you know what's the perfect tool to use right now for this? What? A binder clip. So we had the little U-pins, those were fun. But now we're going to use these binder clips. Look at these binder clips. I'm going to binder clip these three layers together. So I have the outside, the zipper, and the lining. And I make sure the edges, everybody's matched on this edge, and everybody's matched on this edge. And I'm going to clip. Same thing, pull that up, and I'm going to match the seam because those seams should come to the same place, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to match those seams, boom. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to match this edge. Same thing, zipper in the middle, sandwich between the two pieces here, like that. It's not a very far distance. And I might, just because I can, stick another one right in the middle of those. Okay, so my zipper is sandwiched between these two layers, and I'm going to stitch all of this together. Okay, run along this side. Back to the sewing machine. I'm going to put my zipper foot on my machine, which you should have a zipper foot. Zipper foot 
is one of the most important parts of your sewing machine because you can use it for lots of things, not just for zippers. This one's pretty easy, just pops on and off. And I have places I can sew. I'm gonna sew right in the middle. And I'm gonna just put this right there. And I'm gonna sew right down the center of that zipper. Well, not the center, the center of the tab, of the zipper tab. on there okay so I've sandwiched my zipper between the lining and the exterior right side up there we go now we're not done now we're going to take and we're going to do the same thing again with the zipper lining facing this way or line this is lining and the exterior and I'm going to line it up again and I'm going to make sure these sides match those sides so they're they're at the same place see how that's all nice and even like that we'll put our centers together with the zipper sandwiched in between and her instructions are really good on this. Her, his, whomever wrote the pattern, the instructions are well written. We're putting in a zipper, Peter. This is a wild way to put a zipper and I love it. I know, super simple. Okay. Super cool. Super cool. Okay. This makes it easy. It does make it easy. Now we're gonna sew it again. down that side and I have actually three spots where I could put my zipper needle I can put it real close or I can put it on the outside I'm choosing to go down the middle just because right now I don't really want to get too far on either edge if I do the top stitching I'd probably choose one of those closer to one side or the other I thought I was being slick when I took your clamshell class mm -hmm. and I had my zipper foot on and I was running right I mean right next to the zipper I thought I was so smooth until I tried to open the zipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you gotta have room there for that zipper no head. There was no room for the zipper head. No room for the zipper head when you do that. Okay, so now I have the lining on one side of the zipper, and I have the lining on one side of the zipper and the exterior on the other side of the zipper. Zipper's in the middle, sandwiched between the two. This is gonna make it right side out for the exterior and wrong side for the lining. But see now, all my seams are sealed, which I'm really oh, liking that. Oh, that's slick. Nice sealed, everything's everything's sealed. Okay, so let's follow and check our pattern. And we're gonna have to open the zipper. And this is where it gets interesting. And open the zipper all the way. And this is another good reason to have that extend a little farther. And oh yeah. Now we're gonna go and not the, cut the zipper because it would have flew, right. flew right off. And I turn it right side out. Then they'd be coming. They'd be coming, be coming, coming to class and saying, class. hey, get my zipper on there. How do I do that? I've got to do it this way. Lining right side. I want to make it in. See, I have to remember, the lining has that fate, that fuzzy stuff on it. Right. You know, it's like a sub, like you can carry a uh, half a sub in it, like a six-inch sub. <laughs> it's like a it's like a sandwich bag. Yeah. It's a sandwich bag with it's a, a zipper. Sandwich bag with a zipper. So this is the exterior. <laughs> see how this is the exterior because hot dog cozy. You can see yeah, it's hot dog cozy. This is the exterior because I can the zipper is going the right direction. This is the interior because it has the interfacing on it and. It's the wrong side of the zipper. So that's how I can tell my inside from my outside. That's well, the wrong unless side. Unless you want zipper. one of those fancy hidden zippers. But then you yeah. wouldn't be able to operate it because well, it's tabbed on the wrong thing. pull. That's a whole nother story. Okay. <laughs> so now they this little ribbon, this is where we're gonna put the ribbon in. Ooh, that's fun. Ribbon. Ribbon. And this is just some scrap ribbon I had laying around. Um and I how long does she say to make the ribbon? Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, five inches. There's my answer, five inches. Your handy little dandy my always handy in stitches always ruler. My handy little always in stitches ruler that we could give away. I mean, you know, for the nice store. We are the nice store. Okay. And that's what you end up with is that tab. I kind of think that's a little big in my opinion, but. I like it. You like it? You can right. get two fingers in it. So you got something to hold on to. And there you go. All right, so what we're gonna do is put this piece of trim, open the zipper, turn the bag front and lining right sides out, push the bag front through the zipper into the lining. So that's what we did. Close the zipper halfway, we've done that. Fold the ribbon in half, insert the ribbon between the bag front and lining front, the raw edge is aligning with the bag edge. So what I wanna do is center this so that this is my lining, uh -oh. this is my lining, this is my top. So there's that seam, that that's exactly the center. And I'm gonna take this tab and I'm gonna lay that right here on that edge, just like that. Okay, so it points in. And then I'm gonna lay my zipper on top of that, like this. Oh my. See all our little layers? Oh my. Oh my. Like that. I'm gonna use some binder clips because they're my friend. Whoops. <laughs> and no, I'm not like I've been to the bank. <laughs> and there. Get her, Lenine. Don't let her tell you those Man, lies. She's merciless. Here, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, I lied. I lied. What, what, what? What, I what happened? Lied. Don't what happened? line it up with the seam. That's not the center because there's five. One, two, three, four, five. I need to be in the center of this one. Oh. It didn't look right. Looky there. So disregard. Redo. Redo. This is where we want to be. Right here. Right there. Now we're good. It's like, it doesn't make sense on a seam. And it didn't. But now my zipper is in the middle. So there you go. We are right in the middle. In the middle, in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna write them. Okay. And now I'm gonna sew down each side, each end. It's wrong side out. This is the interior. My zipper's open. Don't do this with your zipper closed because you won't be happy. Do it with my zipper open. And then I wanna make sure everything in there is laying nice and flat so I don't, you know, bunch anything up. I got a dumb question. Oh, you know dumb question. If you took the zipper and scooched it to one side, could you use the zipper as a a loop-de-loop -loop hanger deal? Oh, in yeah. In place of the lace? Yes. How cute would that be? You know where I got that idea off of? Your keychain. Oh, yeah. Because your key fob did cute. that. You see what he's saying? Instead of putting another piece of fiber in there, just loop this around. Like scoot the zipper, but I don't know if you scoot the zipper mm, you'd over have to far do it. enough. I just don't know. You'd I'm have not to do that it that way and then like that. Yeah, you could do it. You'd have to loop it in, loop it, and then back out, and then you could have oh, a zipper. Oh, that's too much. That'd be cute. That's, okay, it might be too much for might me to handle. Might be too much, but it's a good idea. All right, so then we're gonna sew across both of these ends. Somebody out there is smart enough to figure that yeah. out. Yeah, sew across this end. Well, or cut it off and put it in there as a loop. There you go. And then you don't have to bend it. Okay. We're gonna sew across each end. There we go. And you'll notice this piece hangs out just a little bit more. I'm just gonna get it to the closest, the deepest one. Oops, change my foot back. Done with the zipper foot. There, okay, here we go. So, now I am going to lock this stitch at the beginning and the end just to make sure it stays. So that's hanging out a little bit, but I'm going to go from this side. And you can sew through that zipper because it's nylon, right? Right, yeah, yeah. I, I Versus do the not metal use a metal zipper. Do not use a metal zipper. You think a pin's going to mess your machine up. I thought I'd try that. And then here's this one. And there's my ribbon. All right, we're going to go down this side. In there. See my zipper, I just pulled her apart. We're 
get this whole bag done today. We might have to make this its own video. Separate from what's new. Yeah. Okay, so I have my ends hanging out. I have my zipper open. Now I have kind of a flat pocket. It's um, a Kleenex holder It's now. a Kleenex holder, yeah. <laughs> and you real honestly, you could go with this. I mean, you could be done at this point if you wanted to. So do you have any fancy cappy tips on this project? Well, I don't know. To zhuzh it up. To zhuzh it up. Oh, gosh. Use an embroidery fabric, put beads on it. But I want you to see, you can be done at this point. If you just want done. a flat bag, if you just want this to be flat, there is nothing wrong with that. Not a thing wrong with that, other than I caught my fabric funny. I'm going to cut that off in a minute anyway, because it's going to go into the gusset. But the flat bag is actually kind of cool. The flat bag is kind of cool. So there you be go. Be like a back to school pencil case, yeah. man. It just would be flat. Okay. Next step is to cut the zipper off. We're just going to chop that puppy right off. And cut this one off. Take it to the chop shop. And there you go. No more zipper for you. And now we're going to do these gussets. And these are kind of a little scary. But or at least they're not many. They're not many. Yeah, they're not eensy teensy eensy. So there is the end of my zipper. And I want it to look like that. So when you look at the picture, you can see there's the seam, there's the zipper going up, and these are where I sew my gussets. Okay. And that's gonna be confusing to people. Yep. And then same thing here. But I got it. There's this end, and there's where I sew my gussets where my fingers are. Now, the gusset measurement is in an inch and a quarter. So what you want to do is line these sides up so that the seam is right along that side. See how that seam comes right there? And line that up so that it lays, you know, fairly flat so you get a shape that you want. And now I'm going to come in an inch and a half, an inch and a half, from there, an inch, one, and there's a half. And I'm going to draw myself a line with this friction pen. With the friction frack. The friction frack, and I'm going to draw a line right across here. Okay? And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Come in an inch and a half from the point, an inch and a half. And I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. Okay? So that's where my gusset's going to be. An inch and a half in. Now, I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew across all four of those. One, two, and I'm going to do it on this end too. Three, four. Stay tuned. Nice. Take a break. Let me get my stylus. Stylus, stylus, stylus. I'm going to go to heaven with my stylus in my hand. So I'm going to open that up just to make it be a little nicer. There. There we go. Now when you're doing your gussets, you really want to be sure you lock the stitch at the beginning and the end because that gusset's going to go up wear and tear. There we go. Do that on all four corners. All right, so I've sewn my gussets. That's what these are called. Once you learn to sew a gusset, you will like take it to every dinner party and say, would you like to watch me sew a gusset? <laughs> <laughs> it's your hat trick. It's your hat trick. It is such a cool thing to make this, you know, what was flat. I did open it up and show you it was flat. And now it has these funny little bunny ears. Now, they just tell you you're just going to trim this off. I found, We found a pair of pinky shears. <laughs> <laughs> we are a quilt store. We do Ooh. sell these. Supplies. These are these are old ones. What are they? W-I-S-S, -S, Newark, New Jersey, USA. 
It may even have a patent on it. Patent 1959190. That's probably from who knows when. Anyway, they, these will not cut. They are beyond cutting. But these are pinking shears. You may remember Grandma having a pair. I don't know. We still sell them. They're still available. Um, but pinking shears are kind of nice to cut. These won't, I would quite like to cut through this because you don't finish these seams. You have raw seams. I don't care. The raw seams are inside. Nobody's going to see my raw seams. I actually did cut okay. this with pinking shears because I have a pair that work. Um, but <laughs> there's raw seams here. We're fine with that. It doesn't matter. It's just inside. This is just a little cutesy. If you really wanted to, you could put binding. You know, you could wrap that in binding and bind it and all that. Whatever. Do it what you want. But since our pinking shears are post uh, Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> by about two days. I'm just going to use my good old rotary cutter and I'm going to cut these uh, gussets now. Cut these ends off. So there you have, you know, funny little hats for now. You know what I just realized? What's that? These were well loved. Look at they the handle. They were. Yeah, somebody's the, put those They used to use. it so much that the cr they wore the chrome off. They did. They've, wow. They've put those to use. Those have got a, a good... And you know what? With the right care, those could probably be brought back to life. Can you resharpen pinking shears? Well, I don't know. I suppose you can. The right person would know. All right. So now I'm might, done. Might be a weekend project. Might be a weekend project. I'm done. These are all raw edges. Don't let it freak you out. If you want to zigzag over that so you don't have a raw oh, edge, yeah, that's zigzag. fine. Um, whatever toots your whistle. But now we're going to turn this little puppy right side out. <gasps> look. Oh, look at that. Look at how that Beautiful. turned out. Those little gussets. I love the reveal. I love the reveal. It's always the best part. And here's my little thing. So my zipper's over here. So now when I pull my zipper, see my tab, pulls it across. And now you have this little box that will hold whatever I want in it. Isn't that fun? That is cool. Here's the other one. I love where that blue ended up, too. Yeah, it just, that kind of ended there. There's brown here. I love that. It's very random. I love it. But I'm thinking you could it's use It's like a, a calico light. kitty. It is like a calico kitty. So that's your Made with Love project for this month. Um, this one ended up a little taller. I think I made my guess it's a little more accurate. This one's a little bigger. But that this is a launch pad. You could make this pretty much any size you wanted. You could make this bigger by making your squares rather than 10 inch squares, make them 12, 15, 16, you know, whatever you want. Make them littler if you want. Um, there's no right or wrong. It's your pattern, you make it how you want. I'm liking this a lot though. I can't wait to go home and sew mine with my Tim Holtz yes. charm squares. Tim Holtz Eclectic Elements, he's got Love some Love that to charm with. pack. Um, so yeah, this is a fun little bag. I think you could put, uh, ribbons on both ends if you wanted to so you'd have ribbons on both ends I can see hanging this you know if you're traveling oh, yeah, you yeah, can open yeah. it up and kind of tuck little things down inside there when you're traveling pencil box I don't know you'll find more uses for it than I can um, but there you have it this I know is... a guy I know a guy who keeps all his um, binder clips in there oh yeah 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 his binding clips Our sales rep we have yep. a sales rep puts all these binder clips in one yep. of these it's perfect so all these little that you have a lazoo gazillion of these hanging around, be perfect to store those. And you saw everything I took out of it. So anyway, here's your Made With Love patchwork pouch by the Moda Company. It's our September sew along project. Uh, we didn't drag it out this time. We just did it in one whole video, and I'm glad that you got to see it. Post your pictures on our Facebook Insiders page when you make these so we can see how you made yours and what creative things you do with them, because you know, Peter, they are not going to just make them like this. They're going to zooge it all up make it all bougie bougie mm -hmm. bougie you gotta have a little bougie made bougie. with love bougie bag there you go well here's my two <laughs> is that your made with love bougie these are bags made, these are made with love yep and i'm gonna set them out front so you guys can look at them by the register and if you don't know where they are ask peter because <laughs> he didn't know because i still were. won't be able to find them <laughs> so we'll find them oh shoot all right well that's it for the Made with Love, and uh, stay tuned. We're going to have a What's New video as well on our channel. You'll have to go to a different separate, video. Yep, separate different video. Different video, but uh, it's also going to be there. So happy stitching.